Guys, do you remember your first kiss? What stood out most to you about it? Was it the embarrassing awkwardness? Was it the time leading up to it? Did it go perfectly? Or did you wind up sick to your stomach, glued to the toilet, completely exhausted with swollen eyelids? Hey guys, Zach here again with Riddle With This, and today I wanted to talk about Chagas disease, also known as American trypanosomiasis. So what exactly is it? Chagas disease is caused by a protozoa known as Trypanosoma crutzi, and its primary vector is an insect known as a triatomy. So who can get it? The CDC currently estimates that around 8 million people in Central and South America, as well as Mexico, are infected with Chagas disease. And it turns out that Chagas disease can also be found in the southern United States. And what's more, most people infected with it don't even realize they're infected with it. Okay, so let's talk about transmission. Unfortunately, there are multiple ways a person can become infected with Chagas disease. The primary mode of infection is known as a vector-borne infection, which basically just means that it's transmitted through the bite of an insect. Specifically, a triatomy. Specifically, this one. It's kind of cute, isn't it? In a terrifying way. These insects feed on blood and will become infected with the disease after taking a blood meal from an infected host. And this particular insect has a very interesting moniker. With a propensity for feeding at night and typically biting the face of its host, this insect is commonly called the kissing bug or the assassin bug. Now once the insect has taken its blood meal, it showcases very poor table manners by defecating directly on its host. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend trying that at the next dinner party you're invited to, because you probably won't be invited back. The unsuspected host is then infected by Trypanosoma crutzi through the mucous membrane, or when the host wipes the poop across a break in the skin, such as the bite site, the mouth, or the eyes. Other methods of infection include blood transfusions, congenital transmission, or transmission from pregnant mother to child, organ transplantation, accidental exposure in a lab, and eating undercooked food that's been contaminated with triatamine bug feces. It's important to note that the disease cannot be transmitted through casual contact with infected people or animals. So what are the symptoms of this thing? Well, the disease comes in two stages, the acute phase and the chronic phase. And while it's not just enough that you can be infected by poop, adding to the frustration of the situation is the fact that both stages of the infection can be either symptom-free or life-threatening. Let's take a look at the acute phase. This phase of the disease can last anywhere from a few weeks to a few months, with symptoms that can include fatigue, fever, headache, body ache, loss of appetite, rash, diarrhea, vomiting, or like I said, no symptoms at all. Now I wanna ask you guys a question. Which of these symptoms look like symptoms of other illnesses? Take your time. Yeah, pretty much all of them, right? Yeah. And it's for that reason that a lot of people don't realize they've actually been infected with Chagas disease rather than something else like the flu. Even so, there are a few distinguishing markers that doctors may be able to pick up on that point to Chagas disease, such as swelling of the glands, mild enlargement of the liver and spleen, swelling at the bite site known as a shagoma, or swelling of the eyelids near the site of the infection known as Romana's sign. During the acute phase of infection, people will often feel better after a few weeks to a few months after developing symptoms. Of course, if left untreated, the infection can stay in the body. Those who can be hit particularly hard by this disease include individuals with weakened immune systems, such as those with HIV or those taking chemotherapy, and young children. As it happens, young children can sometimes die from infection of the brain, known as meningoencephalitis, and from infection of the heart muscle, known as myocarditis. However, it is important to note that deaths occur in less than 5% of children. All right, so let's take a look at the chronic phase. The chronic phase of infection can last for a very long time, like decades, or even the rest of your life. But most of the time, the individual doesn't really show symptoms of infection. However, in 20 to 30%, cases of chronic infection, the individual can experience heart complications such as heart failure, altered heart rate or rhythm, an enlarged heart, or even cardiac arrest. Infected individuals may also experience gastrointestinal complications such as an enlarged colon known as megacolon or an enlarged esophagus known as megaesophagus. And these symptoms can of course lead to trouble eating and pooping. Thank you kissing bug. Thank you for trying to take away two of the greatest joys of my life. All right, so how do we treat this thing? There are two methods of treatment used for Chagas disease. The first is killing the parasite, of course, with antiparasitic medication, such as benzonidazole, which is FDA approved for kids ages two through 12, and nifertamum, which is FDA approved for kids from time of birth to the age of 18. The other method of treatment is simply managing the symptoms with symptomatic treatment. Thankfully, most individuals don't need to be hospitalized while they're receiving treatment for Chagas disease. Well, guys, that's all I've got for right now. I really hope you enjoyed the video. 
And as always, if you have a request that you want to make for a video or topic, feel free to send me an email or reach out to me on any one of my social media outlets, and I'll be happy to discuss it. And hey, for any of you that might be interested, over the last couple months, I started a second YouTube channel where I share my love of gaming with you guys. It's called Arrow to the Knee Gaming. And if you guys want to take a minute and check it out, feel free to do so. Stay safe out there, guys. Happy Valentine's Day.